<laughs> well, yeah. Like, what? Nintendo's doing what? No. They wouldn't. Nintendo doesn't know what they're doing. Are you sure? <laughs> Alright. 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 All right. Fine. Cool. Alright. Don't worry. I'll tell the people. I'll tell the people. I'm going to tell you people what's going on with Nintendo's Virtual Console. Hey everyone, so uh, I'm going to let you know straight away here, if you uh, saw the entirety of the Nintendo Prime podcast uh, a few days ago, back on Wednesday, uh, this won't be new news to you, because we talked about this exact same thing there. But for those that can't sift through a three-hour podcast, I can't blame you, it's pretty long, uh, to get to it, I figured I would make a standalone video here for your Saturday. Uh, and this, all this information comes from Samus Hunter 2. We've talked about Samus Hunter many times on this channel. One of the most reliable leakers at the moment for Nintendo information. A ton of stuff, right? You can head to her Twitter account to check her credibility if you would like. But uh, she gave me a bunch of behind-the-scenes information about Nintendo's future plans, future plans for virtual console. Now, it feels weird saying virtual console because Nintendo hasn't been messing with virtual console, right? Virtual console seems to be an idea of the past, you know, back on the 3DS, on the Wii even a little bit, on the Wii U, on the DS a little bit. Uh, you could purchase some of Nintendo's old games through a system called virtual console. Some, sometimes it'd be like $5, $10, etc., right? They'd be pretty cheap, um, sort of. Some people kind of thought it was overpriced, but it didn't really matter. What sucked about Virtual Console, of course, was that every time you moved to a new system, your games didn't come with you. Now, on Wii U, it was a little bit different. You could bring the Wii Virtual Console through, like, a back channel, which basically was, hey, um, you just boot up Wii inside of your Virtual con your Wii U. It, it just, it really wasn't that convenient, and then you could upgrade your Wii. It, it was dumb. It was a really dumb way Nintendo handle it, but... People loved Virtual Console, a way to get Nintendo's classic games from the NES, NES, N64. Those were like the three big systems they kept putting on it. it. Made a lot of sense for Nintendo and a lot of sense for fans. And then when we got to the Switch, Nintendo decided, hey, we're not doing Virtual Console, right? We're going to give you the NES and SNES apps through Nintendo Switch Online and make it a subscription service where you no longer own these classic games, but you can access them through Nintendo Switch Online for like 20 bucks a year. So... People have been wondering, though, since they added the SNES app, they really haven't been adding a lot of games, right? They've been very slow at adding games, very sporadic. They started out by doing new games every single month, and now, I mean, gosh, we maybe get some new titles once every six months, maybe? Maybe twice a year at the most? So, why the hell are we barely getting updates to those apps, let alone, it's been so long, where's the N64? Why not Game Boy or Game Boy Advance? DS, right? Why don't we have more offerings. Well, it turns out it looks like Nintendo, according to Samus Hunter, is revamping the entire way they're delivering classic games in the future. In fact, so much so it might launch this year alongside the potential Switch Pro. Let's get into it. So in, in a private conversation I had with Samus Hunter behind the scenes, obviously permission to talk about, she said, another plan for the fiscal year is to improve the amount of past Nintendo games from other consoles after the NES and SNES era available on Switch, aka a brand new virtual console, although they're not likely going to use the virtual console name. Uh, she's talking about this fiscal year. So th this fiscal year ending March of 2022. Sometime in there, Nintendo is supposedly supposed to launch this. So I asked, so is this like a service that's di different from Nintendo Switch Online? Um, that focuses on like a virtual console because right now, right, you get this stuff through Nintendo Switch Online. So is this just part of that? And she goes, it's possible, but I was able to get this information in October of last year and I haven't received any updates since, but there are also plans for paying for individual games to have them unlimited. Nintendo has long been thinking about how to expand subscription services to have a steady influx of revenue, but it's also important to not limit the supply of games to a single method of attaining them. So then I responded, I said, so 
Summarizing the virtual console stuff, they are looking to expand the current service into more systems, either keeping it part of the Switch Online or separating it out, a la Microsoft's Game Pass. And then they are looking to also offer these games for individual purchase as an option. She goes, yes, but it will not be tied to Nintendo Switch Online. Think Game Pass. So basically saying that Nintendo's going to launch their own Game Pass-like service um, for the uh, old games. Now, I, I originally thought, well, maybe it's more like PS Now, uh, but PlayStation Now is a streaming service. This won't be streaming. This is going to be more like kind of like it is Nintendo Switch Online, but its own service just for just for old games. And then, on top of that, you can still purchase the games individually, which is why the Game Pass comparison made some sense. Game Pass, again, is a little bit different. It's a little bit... It's, it, it's fairly pricey, I guess, you know? It's like 15 bucks a month or whatever. But you also... To get access to brand new games day one, uh, like MLB The Show came out day one, Outriders was day one, Halo Infinite's going to be day one. So all these games day one is, is what really makes Game Pass valuable. So Nintendo's not doing that, they're just focusing on their classic games, but Nintendo has such a massive library and staple of classic games going back 30 plus years that it makes a lot of sense for them to have a service like this. Now, some people might not be happy because, hey, you want to play games online on Switch, you're still going to need Nintendo Switch Online. Oh, and hey, now you want to play the old games, you're going to need a separate service. That kind of sucks. And obviously, this all could be tied into Switch Pro. Hence, like, Switch Pro is supposedly launching by the end of this fiscal year. So, this is launching by the end of that fiscal year. Maybe uh, it needs the extra power. I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure why. But they're adding more platforms. That's kind of the big news as well. N64, Game Boy, GBA, DS. All possibilities here. I would like to think we GameCube, but I, I don't know if Nintendo's going to quite go that far. Maybe they will. Maybe it depends on what they're going to charge for the service. I mean, they decide, hey, we're charging you hundred bucks a year for this service. Well, I mean, it better have GameCube and Wii games then. But again, we'll get into that uh, in the future. I, I do think that this is a nice service, though. If this does come true, because this is something I feel like Nintendo could carry over. If you're subscribed to this and want access to all these games, that subscription could still exist on a future platform. This alleviates the idea of buying the game and then you can't bring it over and you have to rebuy. Now, Nintendo's still going to offer you the ability, apparently, to rebuy because Nintendo feels it's important to have multiple delivery methods. But if they felt it was important, why didn't they do that in the first place? That's kind of... I don't know, maybe because they had the NES and SNES Classic. Maybe they thought they were doing it, right? We had the NES and SNES Classic, and then we also had the NES and SNES app. So maybe Nintendo thought they were kind of doing this already, but it really wasn't the same thing. People couldn't choose what games they wanted to buy. So I, I do think that this is a good thing overall, uh, despite the fact that it's another subscription service, another subscription fee, uh, but it's one I think I can get behind. And it's optional. You could just buy the games. You could just buy the games. And I don't think they're ever taking the SNES and NES app away from Nintendo Switch Online. Whatever it is today, I think they're going to leave it there. I don't think they're going to lower the value of Nintendo Switch Online by removing them. But I could be wrong. All I know is I'm glad to see Nintendo caring. I think that's that's my biggest takeaway. Uh, supposing all this is true from Samus Hunter, which I have no reason to doubt it, man, like Nintendo cares about that library of games cares and, and and recognizes hey maybe we don't have to charge gamers an arm and a leg to access our classic library that to me is the biggest positive takeaway from this so you guys let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below uh if you enjoy this video drop a like subscribe for more uh we have a lot of stuff happening uh e3 2021 i'm gonna keep bringing it up until we get there uh we're like 33 or 34 days away almost one month oh i'm so excited i remember we have three thousand five hundred dollars plus worth of giveaways uh happening Lots of games, lots and lots of games, let me tell you. Uh, we have a bunch of sponsors and everything. We, we, we got collectibles, we got merchandise, we got uh, consoles being given away, we got, uh, what is it, pro controllers, a whole bunch of stuff. Skyward Sword Joy-Con. I hope you show up to our live reaction of all the E3 shenanigans. We have gaming competitions. We have a bunch of stuff. We're putting on an event. Head down to the description. We have a link to our initial stream we're going to be doing for E3 2021. 
21. It's Nintendo Prime at E3 uh, day one. Uh, so check that out. Uh, the stream isn't going live again for like 34 days, but you can sign up for notifications for it so you can be there right away for our two-hour pre-show where, yeah, we got giveaways going on. We got conversations. We got special guests. HMK, Game Over, Jesse, Andres, Restart. Trying to get a few others. Maybe misclick gaming as well. We are expanding that roster every single week. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.